They've got the second greatest quarterback of all time, right behind Drew Brees. And now we've got a head-to-head -head two times a year. we got our work cut out for us, and then they have an addition. You bring in Rob Gronkowski and LaShawn McCoy. You already have two 1,000-yard receivers and Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. This is a team fighting for second place. I love some good trash talk. It's me excited about this season. That hopefully will happen. Uh, Tim Hasselbeck back here with us. Max, who has the scarier offense? Is it the Bucks or the Saints? It's actually the Saints. Let's start with continuity. They are in the same system with the same coach, with the same quarterback, same receivers they've always had, except they actually added the one thing the offense has been missing in recent years, which is a bona fide number two receivers, with receiver, which they have known now in Emmanuel Sanders to go with Michael Thomas. Obviously, Kamara is excellent. Um, and Drew Brees, look, Yes, his arm is not as strong as it used to be. He's older, but he seems to be as accurate as ever. And that was really Drew Brees' calling card, his accuracy, especially in the, you know, at home in the Dome. Um, so you have a super accurate quarterback still with, an improve, with improved offensive weapons because they've maintained what they had and just added the one piece you maybe could complain about if you were nitpicking. Um, I, I would say it's Drew Brees. When you look at the Bucks, they capture your imagination like, wow, they really have all this upside. But Tom Brady, look, he can come through when it matters most, especially over the second half of his career. He's shown not just him on a great team with a great coach who can do that. He really elevated in pressure situations consistently, except not last year as much. You know, Tom Brady, was he known more for accuracy? No, not like accurate like Drew Brees, but a strong-armed quarterback who's not as strong-armed as he used to be. Yes, he can still gun it. He's shown 61 miles an hour and all that st stuff on the radar gun responding to me, apparently. But what happens when guys get older? They, can, they still have the fastball, but they, they're, they're muscling it more. They can't put it where they want it as much. And so it's not just receivers that he's unfamiliar with. He missed guys every which way, short, long, left, right. You know, it happened throughout the season. And when he needed to be at his best most in that last game against Miami and again in the playoffs, he failed to do what he's always done. And, and, and yes, partly it's his situation, no doubt, and partly it's age. I think Drew Brees has retained more of what made him Drew Brees than Tom Brady has. Plus, he is actually in the better situation when you look at it carefully. I like the Saints. Listen, I got, I got nothing but respect for the Saints and what they put together, but I'm rolling with Tampa Bay being a more explosive offense. I think they're hungry, um, and I think that they're new. And the reason why I bring that up is because I think that at some point in time, when we watched New Orleans, we sort of felt like they've missed their opportunities. Obviously, that miracle in Minneapolis when the Minnesota Vikings beat them in the divisional playoff game on that, 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 that pass that, that New Orleans forgot to defend with Stephon Diggs ending up going into the end zone before they got slammed in the NFC Championship game against the Philadelphia Eagles. That was one year, and then obviously they came back, and then they lost to the Los Angeles Rams because of a pass in the fifth, you know, because of a, a, you know, I would say rough, you know, when you hit him before the, 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 the ball even came to the receiver. Obviously, you got that going on, and so they missed an opportunity there. But you did find yourself looking at New Orleans. Over the last three years, they've had their chances. Michael Thomas was great. Drew Brees was great. Alvin Kamara was great. You've got you got Jared Cook there now. you got acquired Emmanuel Sanders, who hasn't had a 1,000-yard season since, I think, like 2016. So we got, even though he could still play. So we've got that to take into consideration, whereas I look at Tampa Bay, and there's nothing, I mean, you got to learn as you go along, if you're going up against them, to have, to, to sit up there and have O.J. Howard, Wick Gronk, Wick Cameron break. That's three tight ends. So you talk about using two dual tight ends anytime you want to. Not only did you have Ronald Jones, who's a decent running back, but now you've acquired Shady McCoy. Obviously, you got Godwin and Mike Evans as your wideouts. I look at Tampa Bay right now, and they are just loaded with weapons all over the place on the offensive side of the ball. Byron Leftwich is a is an offensive coordinator that warrants consideration for head coaching possibilities. We all know what Bruce Arians can bring to the table and how respected he is as a head coach. I'm just of the mindset that the newness of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, combined with the talent that they have, make them more formidable, even though the chemistry exists with the New Orleans Saints, and you can lean on that somewhere along the way we just got the impression their time arrived 
and over the course of three consecutive postseasons, they didn't capitalize on it as much as they should have, even though for the most part it was through little fault of their own. In the end, their opportunity has come and gone in my estimation. I would say that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will be the more explosive offense. Taysom Hill, and I have had a lot of arguments with football people over the last couple of years, and they've come around on this because I was hearing a lot of like, well, he's a gadget guy. Well, it's quite a gadget. This dude can do everything. He does it intensely, and he does it at a high level. You have Taysom Hill on the field. You can play him at quarterback, running back, fullback. He could be a wideout. You can line him up just about anywhere, and he does. He runs a four, almost a four, four, forty. I think a four, 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 forty. He's lightning fast. He can catch. He can like like Taysom Hill. I, I mentioned these all these players on offense and didn't even mention him. But that is a valuable piece. And and they've integrated this. Like the only real new piece on offense they have to integrate is the number two receiver they've needed. And they have him now. And he's really good. Well, for me personally, I think the strongest argument in favor of the New Orleans Saints is the continuity. The fact that particularly during this time of a global pandemic where so much has been compromised because of the pandemic, the fact that you, by and large, have a roster that has gelled with one another and you've added Emmanuel Sanders to that equation, I think that's a tremendous argument in their favor. I'll concede that. I'll certainly concede that they've got an advantage at the running back spot with Alvin Kamara. I don't think there's any doubt about that. But as great as Michael Thomas is and as much as I respect Emmanuel Sanders I put Mike Evans and Chris Godwin up there to go against them I'd like to see how that pans out from the tight end spot the fact that you have not just two but three tight ends you can utilize one of them at a time two of them at a time damn it all three of them at a time I think that buffers the level of production that you could ultimately get from Tom Brady because when Tom Brady has been at his most effective is when he's had a tight end or a slot receiver that he could rely upon and the fact that you got Howard Gronk and Cameron break to rely upon I think is a huge huge plus for Tom Brady thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube for live streaming sports and premium content subscribe to ESPN plus